So we're good to go. You're all set. Have a nice meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to uh, call the finance committee meeting of the town council on uh, June 9th at 2.30 uh, p.m. And uh, we have a quorum of the committee present for of the uh, council members out of five, which constitutes a quorum and two of the resident members. And um, we have the um, finance director present. So uh, I think at this point, uh, I want to just remind uh, everybody that pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, uh, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, this meeting of the finance committee is being conducted uh, by a remote participation. So I want to go through uh, the committee members who are present and um, ask each of the members to indicate that they can hear and then we can confirm that they can be heard. And uh, we may be joined uh, and expect to be joined by one additional member, Ms. Pavanelli, a little bit later. Um, so Pat D'Angelis is not present for the meeting. Uh, Lynn Riesmer? Present. Uh, Dorothy Pam? Present. Kathy Shane? Present. Uh, Bob Hegner? Present. Mary Lou Talman? Present. Okay, so I think that uh, I heard everybody who I asked to recognize all of the committee members. Um, and uh, we also joined by Angela Mills, who's taking minutes for us. Thank you, Sean Mangano and Sonia Aldrich. So um, with that, I'm going to, um, we are going to do, um, have public comment later in the uh, meeting. I'm going to do some sharing at various points and then um, stop the sharing when the uh, it's uh, no longer um, helpful to have the sharing take place, but I wanted to start by putting the agenda on the screen for a moment and uh, remind everybody that the first item that's listed is to review the regional school budget, um, but to remind you that we do not need to make any decisions about the regional school budget today. Uh, and uh, the regional school budget is not going to be voted on by the council until June 29th. So that at this point, um, when we do talk about the regional school budget, it's going to be for the purpose of trying to make uh, sure that we're all happy with um, the information presented and to enable us to ask additional questions if additional questions are necessary, because there still is time to, um, if there are additional questions that came forward after last night, to go to the um, uh, go, go to the regional school district, pose the questions, and then get a response back. So that's basically um, where we uh, what would happen there. So. Um, I think that I won't put the regional school presentation up from last night right now, and we'll just um, do that um, as um, is necessary later. But at this point, I think we can, uh, uh, I'll hold off on the sharing and I think we're back to, to the regular presentation. Were there any, um, things that people have thought about since last night regarding the regional school budget that's additional information that would be helpful. So, yes, Bob. Yeah, I, I noticed it was on page, it was one of the pages of the presentation, but it was, it was in the packet that we got, you know, last week. Um, it was on page 43 or something. It was the sort of the budget 
the proposed budget, general fund appropriation, where they had the payroll accounts, the expense accounts, and all that. And I noticed that in the expense accounts, the special education expense account went down $454,000 over the FY20, although the FY20 was about $300,000 higher than the FY19. So I just wanted, I think it would be helpful to understand what's going on with, with that expense budget. Um, Andy, I can answer that one a little bit. If, okay, uh, why don't you go ahead. Um, just speaking on my experience from when I was there, um, the nature of the expense accounts for special education, particularly at the region, is that the, the largest portion of that budget is for out-of-district students. And the cost for an out-of-district student can range anywhere from 50000 to 300000 sometimes more. Um, and they tend to go, you know, sometimes they move out of town and then the financial obligation moves to another town. Um, often they move in and then we have to, we have to budget for it. Um, so a couple of years ago, we had some move in or become, come up from sixth grade to where we had to start budgeting for them at the region. And so I don't know this for sure. It's probably once they put the full budget document out and you can see the, the number of students that are in out of district placements. Um, I'm assuming that the number of out of district students has gone down or the cost of the, the programming has gone down. Um, Cause that's usually what generates those large swings. Um, the other thing that happened, which may be affecting next year for special ed is um, the state changed the circuit breaker reimbursement law. So circuit breaker originally used to only cover the cost of um, special education students when that cost exceeded roughly $40,000. Um, and they, would, they wouldn't cover any special ed transportation. And one of the big things that they changed, I um, think, was that they, start, they did start including transportation, which is a huge cost. It was like two or $300,000 for the region and sometimes more. Um, so they started reimbursing for some of that special ed transportation as well. Um, and they made some other little changes to it. So that, if, if the reimbursement went up for circuit breaker, then that means their general fund portion would go down. But we can, but I can, um, I can follow up with Doug just to verify those things for you to make sure that's what happened. Yeah, it, it, that makes sense. It just, it just stood out. Yeah, it's a big number. Yeah, um, it's a big number on this. Uh, you know, it's half of the, <laughs> of the uh, change. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Okay, is there anything else? I was going to report on one thing that I had uh, talked with Sean about, but Dorothy. Two points. Uh, I remember at a previous meeting um, that I believe it was Superintendent Moore said that the district uh, was meeting needs within the district at a higher level than they were before. In other words, there were, there were fewer people were going outside for the very expensive special ed services and that the district had been better at meeting some of them here in town. And my other question was, and Sean partly answered that, was why is this a local expense anyway? Special ed should be a state expense. And it sounds from his um, comment that there's some movement in that direction because yeah. it can just totally skew town budgets and it's, uh, you know, we don't control it. Yeah, can I speak to that a little bit, Andy? Yes. Um, yeah, it's a huge expense, obviously. And there has been a lot of push for more state support. And that's why that law was changed partially. Um, the other thing the state allowed school districts to do a couple of years ago is to create a special ed stabilization fund. Um, and both the region and the elementary schools a couple of years ago did create those special ed stabilization funds and have put some money into them. And it's really intended for if we get a, a move in during the year and we have to obviously pay for it, that there is another funding source. We don't have to pull from other parts of the budget for that one year. Um, and the town council is involved. If we ever use that money, the town council has to approve it. Um, but both both districts are um, prepared for something like that. I think the other thing, uh, historically, there used to be uh, more reliance. I think there's still is some reliance on what was known as the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. and that was that if uh, a district hit an unusual point in the amount that it was required for the uh, budget 
uh, for special education that the overage above, with the formula was to be covered by what was called the circuit breaker provision. But uh, the problem with that was is the legislature was not always reliable on fund, fully funding the circuit breaker amount. Yeah, they still, they, they've been better in the last couple of years. I think they, the, they got up to 75%, which is sort of their commitment. Um, but other years it's been below 75%. So um, they've been a little bit better, but we'll see how that, what happens with COVID-19 and the economic impact and how that affects Circuit Breaker. Ruthie, did you have anything else? Otherwise I'll ask Kathy. Okay, Kathy, you had your hey, I'm, Yeah, I'm gonna build on um, what Bob just asked and then Sean talked about the um, contribution to the stabilization fund. So on the, we can't talk about first page, so I'll talk about the second page. On the page that just showed the addition, the subtractions since the first subtractions were made, it, there was a pullout of $98,000 less to the stabilization fund, the special ed stabilization fund. So my question for both that fund and then on the next page, there is a, um, a fund that Doug referred to last night, contingencies and reserves. Um, and that's got 497,000 in it, if I look at it as the pre-COVID number. So I just want to know how much do we have, uh, just a fact, how much do we have in the stabilization fund on special ed and how much going into the next year and how much do we have a contingency and reserves? So do we have 497? Because last night Doug uh, noted um, when we were talking about potential cuts in school aid that we're, where we hadn't accounted for them, we have a little bit of a buffer. So we have, um, so I'm not sure how that contingency reserve works, but it's nearly $500,000 of a buffer. Um, right. so, and so then the second question is, do we also have one in the other? So uh, you know, I'm, if, one of the things I asked last night, I'm, I'm worried, but I'm no, I understand this, why this is as it is, that we might have some expenses that we haven't known about yet for teachers or substitutes. So they might need that stabilization money. We might get a state cut. They might need that, you know, so just trying to think of where in this budget there's some, um, a little bit of breathing room. So it's just those two numbers. It wasn't to question them or not. And then the same question I have on capital, um, and I know we're supposed to just look at the operating budget now, but Doug showed the capital pieces. As, as the people who are on the Joint Capital Planning Committee know, we didn't do a line item for schools. Um, we have a reserve that we will be talking about in the fall. So I'm wondering whether the region, we got it for elementary, whether they have any from prior years appropriated funds that haven't been fully spent down yet. And I double checked what Doug had sent us and he just sent us, I think just for the elementary school. So that's just a question of the region that I don't think affects this operating budget at all, but one of the, he listed COVID expenses and a couple other things. So it's, those are questions of, I can't get it off these sheets. Yeah, it's, uh, Sean. Um, yeah, the, the first question, I can ask Doug for a breakout of the contingencies um, in their line item. Some of that is um, every budget, regardless of COVID, the regional school district has always had a $280,000 E&D contingency that they vote as part of the budget every year. Um, and it's never been used. It's always just there as a contingency. And the reason why that's done is because of a little bit what Doug spoke about last night. Um, when we vote that, it gives the school committee the ability to use it if there was an emergency without going back to the towns. Um, if we didn't do that, if we ever needed to use any E&D for an emergency or situation, we'd have to go back to the towns for approval. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we include that as part of the budget every year. So at least half of that number that you're looking at is that regularly recurring item. Um, to your second question about capital, so the region doesn't get cash capital like um, the town of Amherst departments do. Um, the region borrows for its capital projects and then assesses the town, all the towns for that capital. 
Okay. Um, and typically they borrow after they know the exact project costs. So the town is only paying the actual debt obligation for the actual costs. Um, okay. So there's not really a situation where there's money left over um, or anything like that. So anything, any emergency costs they would have this year, and I mean this year, I mean in FY21, the town of Amherst wouldn't be assessed that until FY22, which Doug said, you know, alluded to last night. Um, that cost wouldn't hit Amherst until the following year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, I think it's close to where I was going. The uh, but you'll you'll see the term uh, time used in regional school discussions about bans or bond anticipation notes, and that's the mechanism to borrow funds uh, and uh, before the debt is actually issued. Uh, the uh, that is going to be the long-term debt. Um, the long-term debt vote um, isn't really a vote, and it's one of the things that I wanted to just mention that Sean and I had talked about a little bit earlier, um, because the way that the process works is that the um, region sends a letter to each of the towns saying that they are proposing to borrow the following amount of funds for the following purposes. And um, that triggers a period of time in which the um, town can vote that it disapproves of the um, issuance of the debt. And if towns uh, don't vote, then uh, it becomes automatic. So it's sort of like this negative thing. And um, because you don't affirmatively vote to do it, you affirmatively vote to object. Um, what has happened in the course of time for this region is that the region has always been presenting to the four town meetings about the proposed uh, debt to be issued and it is discussed and at the four town meetings. And then uh, nobody's surprised when those letters come out from the school committee. And uh, I never uh, recollect that any of the towns has taken that action. In other communities and in Amherst previously, it would require the select board to make a decision to submit it to a town meeting and then the town meeting um, would have to take the actual vote as the legislative body. And there's a 60 day period. And if those actions don't occur within 60 days, um, then it uh, becomes binding debt on and goes forward. Um, so that's what the process is. Uh, we're in this uh, um, thing that I'm a little bit uncertain about because the stand in for the select board in our form of government is the town manager, the executive. And uh, so what I'm not sure about is whether the town manager has to make a decision to refer it to the council before the council can vote on it or whether the council can take it up in our form of government under its own initiative. Um, the other thing that um, uh, becomes relevant to all of this, um, you know, it's really about process because I don't think that we want to object. What had happened was in March, there was a letter and we didn't do anything with the letter. It became binding after the 60 days. And, uh, but the uh, schools, and this is what I had asked Sean earlier, it, um, have issued a new letter. And uh, so the process has started again. The new letter is just for the reduced amount of borrowing um, to in, uh, listing the projects as presented uh, by the superintendent last night. So um, that's kind of just background um, a little bit. I think that the question that had also come up is whether we want to have something in the uh, financial order even though um, we are, it is the way I said, and I'm going to go back to screen sharing um, in a moment um, so that I can uh, uh, see if I can. I did it right. I don't think. 
think I have a problem with the, hang on just a second, sorry. Um, we could back up to the, somehow I've, uh, I should have let you do the screen sharing after all. Just do stop sharing, Andy. Okay. Okay, now I'm back. Okay. So what now I was going to do is show you the, um, the order, but if you look in the order that uh, Sonia sent to us earlier today, uh, just before the meeting, you'll notice in the order there's a provision in there that kind of affirmatively states that we're not objecting, which is really an unnecessary step to have to take in the order. And, Just what uh, you're, you're so talking about. Uh, yes, you have to go down a little bit. Go lower in the document. That's it. Unless I don't have the right one. Uh, no, that's it. Wait, you're right. You're right there. Um, that's the, so, Andy, that's the condensed version for of the of the vote just for um, the council. It's not the it's not the full uh, notification that you saw previously. That's why it's so much shorter than the the letter that we get. So, uh, I was looking for the piece on the. Uh, is it the yellow that, that, that we're talking about for the? Uh... No, so it's the, the final section there, um, the approval of the 115,000 aggregate principal amount of debt authorized by the vote of the Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee. So that's, that's all that has typically been done, I believe, in the past for the council to vote on. The, the notification that the Regional School Committee sends to the, each town is much longer um, and has a lot more legalese about, you know, the process that they took to vote the debt and um, the notification requirements of the, the notification that actually is sent out by the regional school committee is much longer um, and more complicated. And this is just basically Amherst saying we're okay with the debt. Okay, so what I just wanted to alert you to is when we come back to actually voting on the order, the question, um, a question to come up with is do we really need or want this particular paragraph as a part of the order and uh, Sean if you get the letter from Doug you could just forward it to the committee so that people can take a look at what the full letter looks like I don't think we have to discuss it today okay thank you Lynn for finding the document so quickly yep so um do you need it up? Anything else on the uh, regional? Uh, I see Dorothy's hand is up. Is that from before? You're um, muted. It's it's a new question. It's just a follow up. Um, I was um, looking for notes I took last night when Sean explained what E N D was, and the note I had last night was. It says END line equals reserves, school choice line. So that I didn't understand it last night. Yeah. Um, I heard I mean, that there is no school choice this year, which is personally relevant to me. But I was just confusing how those two things went together. What's it mean? Okay. Um, so END is its own fund or account um, stand, that stands for excess and deficiency. And that is similar to a town's free cash. So anytime the region has surplus revenues, it goes into that account. And anytime we have savings on the expense side, it also goes into that account at the end of the year. Um, and that account is allowed to build up a balance up to 5% of the operating budget, operating capital budget. Um, that's one thing that's different about regions is there is a cap on how much we can have in that reserve, whereas towns don't have a cap on, on their free cash. Um, the region also has a school choice fund, which is completely separate. And whenever students choice into the region, we, the district gets 5,000 per student, plus a little bit more for special education students. And the, the tuition money coming in goes into that school choice fund. And then each year, the school committee and the district decide how much of those funds they want to use to um, 
it doesn't support the general fund budget, but costs are shifted from the general fund budget to that school choice fund. Um, and so there's a decision each year how much of those funds they want to use and, you know, they want to keep the fund sustainable because they don't want to run out of that money um, and have a cliff type situation. So um, both are somewhat, one is definitely reserved. The other one sort of acts like a reserve, but it's used um, to support school choice students. Okay, thank you. Mm. Yeah, uh, so how much is totally in the one that acts like a reserve? The, that was the my question, yeah. yeah. Um, so we always try to keep it, you know, sort of like the town, we try to keep it between three and 5% um, to maintain, you know, a strong um, district. Um, last time when I was there, it was at about 3.7 or 3.8%, um, which is somewhere between one and one and a half million. Um, it's whatever, you just take that percentage and multiply it by roughly 32 million, which is the budget for the region. Um, so it's somewhere between one and one and a half million. It's not, it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things when you think about how big the regional budget is. And um, the 5% guy, the 5% cap is actually, if you compare it to the town, that's the low end of the guidance for the town. The town wants to have between 5% and 15%, whereas the region, the most it can have is 5%. So, um, but it, that's where it's at. And that's not the same as contingency and reserve? No, so the contingency and reserve would be if, if we were to use any of those reserve funds um, or to uh, earmark any of those reserve funds as a contingency in the budget, like we do that 280,000 that I described earlier, that's the, the account that it goes into. Um, so those funds would be, we budget in that account. So the contingency and reserve is within the general fund where E&D is the separate fund. Uh, Lynn. So I just want to understand last night, even though we're not voting on it now, um, there was the capital expenditures. Mm -hmm. And if we, when those are finally approved, do they come to us for approval, number one? And if they do or if they don't, and we find out that, you know, the budget is in serious, serious trouble, could those projects be funded out of this reserve account? Um, so they, so it, it, it's up to you whether you want to approve it or not. If you don't act on the vote, the capital request, the vote within 60 days, then they are automatically approved. Um, and that's the, that's the way the three towns have typically done it, the three smaller towns and the way Amherst had, has done it up until just this past year. Um, so you don't have to act on it, but you can. Um, if you, if, so those three projects they're borrowing for, um, and then they're gonna assess the town. And your question is if the financial situation is such that the town can't pay the assessment, would, could the school use its reserves to pay for those capital projects? Um, yeah, since now I find out they're planning to borrow, that would be the question. Yeah, well, theoretically they could. I mean, so the region always has borrowed for its debt and it's just the way the capital process has always worked for the region. There's always a short-term borrowing and then it's assessed to the towns and the towns pay it. That's how pretty much every regional school district handles its major capital needs is through some sort of borrowing and assessment to towns. Um, but theoretically they could appropriate the reserves for capital projects, but I'm not sure that you'd want to dip into reserves um, for that purpose right now. All right, and then my other question is, when is the clock ticking on the 60 days? So it's in the notification that I'll send out to you. It says the date that the vote occurred. I believe it was a couple of weeks ago. So I don't think you're at any risk of the 60 days um, expiring soon. Um, but uh, when I send the notification out to you uh, today or tomorrow, you'll see the date that it was voted. Um, so it'll be sometime in um, July. So that was when the regional school district voted it. Yeah, it'd be the date that the regional school committee voted it. Okay. Well, the, re the reality is we're not going to know um, by mid-July what condition the state budget's really in. Right. I just... So the, the reality is we'll end up letting the 60 days expire, but I'm just trying to, <laughs> bluntly, I'm trying to identify where every penny is. Yeah, the other thing I'll just note, because it's, it's something we talk about, it, um, the Regional School Committee does have a small capital stabilization fund as well. Um, it's for, again, specifically capital. Um, so mm -hmm. it can't really be used for anything else. And it's, we keep it there as an emergency. Um, it's right. got a 
three or four hundred thousand dollars in it. We were building it up um, to help fund the track replacement. You may pass budget mm -hmm. processes. We've made contributions to it when when things were a little better. Um, we were trying to build it up to to help offset the cost of the track. So there's also that money that if there was a real emergency, um, the region would have access to. Yeah, I mean you don't want to strip the budget of every possible contingency, but right. every once in a while you just want to know. Yeah, you just want to know what's available. What's available? That's all. So uh, just pause for a moment. I see that uh, Sharon, you are um, now here. Can I am. Address? Sorry, sorry, I was late. No, that's okay. I just wanted to um, confirm for the minutes that uh, you came on uh, into the meeting at three o'clock and that uh, the, uh, we are meeting remotely. So I was confirming that you could hear us and that we can hear you. So um, we should go ahead. Lynn, I'm sorry if you were. No. Uh, I mean, it, it's. Um, we have to look at the region debt, which um, shows up in our budget as part of our capital allocation, as being not any different. Once you incur a debt, you've incurred a debt, you have an obligation to repay it. And, uh, and so it is, uh, we've, I don't think we've ever asked, and I'm not aware of any town having asked to go back and relieve it. Uh, it is worth noting that the um, way that the uh, amount is uh, allocated amongst the districts is different from the operating budget. Mm -hmm. That the assessment methodology is not the same assessment methodology as used for the operating budget, which is this 45% uh, uh, budget uh, that we talked about last night. Uh, it is um, straight um, allocation according to the um, property values within the town. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I don't think there's much else to say on it. Any other questions to be um, posed about this? Because we should turn our attention then to the one month budget if there's nothing else to ask right now. Uh, and Sean can take notes back. Uh, yeah, uh, first Kathy, then Lynn. Okay, I, it's it's um, it's mainly having heard there are these other funds in addition to what we're seeing here. If I went on to the regional school budget page on ARPS, would I find this all? You know, so if I could, if I knew what I was looking for, would I find the big reserve? This yeah, the, reserve. The yeah. yeah, the budget document includes um, includes information on the excess and deficiency balance and the school choice fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, Andy, I don't think you're looking for a vote today. Is that correct? That is correct because we have time. Right. Thank you. But we do need to vote on the one month budget if we're going to make a recommendation yeah. to the council. So I think that if uh, everybody's in agreement to do so, we should move to the next agenda item and talk about the one month budget. And uh, I don't know if there were questions that are still lingering from last night. Uh, we'll start there and then we'll put the uh, proposed order up on the screen after that. But let's start by seeing if there are any questions, additional or comments from la after last night's hearing. You want to so, on the screen, Andy? Yes. Huh? Uh, you're going to go ahead and put it on the screen, the uh, proposed order? Yep. Okay. If you have it. Oh, I have the one month budget memo. Uh, if you, if you want to order it, I think is this uh, if this is sort of what we received today. Keep, keep scrolling to the low. end of the document. I'm sorry, Sean. Keep, 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 keep going down. Bottom. Yeah. Lower page. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Now you're in the middle of it. Uh, so 
just go back up a teeny bit to the top again so you can see the top of the order to start. So this um, maybe goes a little bit higher, but um, this is the appropriation and transfer order, I think stopped there, 2104A. And uh, this is what the count uh, has been submitted to the Finance Committee with the intention of submitting it um, with our approval to the council for consideration for adoption. And uh, I don't know if uh, Sean or Sonia have anything to, that they want to say about it at first as the order. But it just encapsulates everything that was um, presented last night. The numbers all match the memo above which was why the two are attached together. And it indicates uh, how much is to be raised and appropriated and how much is to be made available from each of the enterprise funds. Yeah, there's nothing really new on um, from me, Andy. I don't know if Sonia wants to say anything. No. We're not in the same room for once, so. Um, you pretty much said everything there really is to say about this. So the one question that I had asked before the meeting convened, and uh, I'll uh, just come back to it real quickly, is that <laughs> what we, uh, what is below um, where it has town operating budget um, it's my understanding of how the order is structured that um, the, we are actually voting an entire amount for operations of the town during the month of July and that the breakdown that is shown in the chart that's below is uh, to illustrate the intent but it is not uh, a part of the actual order itself so that if uh, public safety expenses were to be a little bit higher and uh, general government a little bit lower the town manager would have the authority to make that transfer would not have to come back to the council to do that which is different from the way that it would have worked under our old form of government uh, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I stated that correctly and that everybody had the opportunity to, um, to look at it. Dorothy, I see your hand up. I mute Dorothy. Yep. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> it, because of the memo that you sent out, <clears throat> with the assignments of, of areas of the budget to look into. And um, you had me down for community services. Um, I then looked on the um, town site, there was community services and there was community services program. And community service program includes some things which might, you might think go under public safety. Um, so I was interested in that. It was community policing initiatives, neighborhood watch programs, um, directed bicycle patrol unit, so I was just, um, and there was some school-based programs and Adventure Ropes Challenge. I was wondering, when you write community services, do you mean community services program? Or is that under public safety? That's all under, what you just mentioned is all under public safety. Community services would be health, leisure services, um, council on aging. Okay. That structure is basically coming from the finance, I mean, from the, uh, Budget book, that's how it's broken out by functional areas. Okay, thank that you. Structures like this. Yep, that's what I wanted to know. There's another hand up. Uh, Mary Lou? Yep. Mary Lou, I'm going Mary to. Lou. But I can't find it. I, I you're understand. Now, you're, now, you're now on. 
Oh, Go okay. For it. All right. The um, I'm looking for where we pay debt and if we pay any in July. I thought I read that somewhere, but I can't find it. We obviously have debt. We pay toward uh, things we've borrowed, but I don't see it on this chart. Yes, that's true. Um, there's no debt service due in July, so it's not included in the one month budget. But we okay. do have a debt service and it will be part of the 12 month budget. All right, thank you. Yeah. And similarly, there's uh, uh, no uh, capital in the one month budget. So any capital would be spent with uh, money that was um, had been allocated in the previous year. So other questions? Mary Lou. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't know, Mary Lou, do you have other questions still or was that, had your hand just stayed up? No, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, Bob Hegner. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, uh, back to the uh, town operating budget. Um, I understand that the town manager has flexibility to move money among these accounts, which is fine. I'm just wondering whether this particular order needs to note that or not, just for the record, so that we're not setting up a situation where someone looks at this and says, oh, wait a minute, you overspent general government or something like that. Um, just a thought. I, I don't know if it's necessary or not, but. Um, it's not required by law. I'm sorry? But it's not required by law, but if that's practice that council wants to make, that's fine. Okay. That's all. As I said, I don't have a problem with it. I just think it, you know, you know, and if we don't need, if the, if the council is fine with the order as it is, that's fine with me too. Just pointing out if I, you know, if I, if I pretend to be a lawyer, I might want to note this somewhere just so that no one says, oh, uh, Mr. Bachman is held to these numbers. Yeah, I just want to comment that um, the only place that you would see that that might happen would be within the town's operating budget between the functional areas. Sometimes one is lower and the others, um, their savings and others that covers that. That used to be the typical amendments at town meeting for the previous year um, budget. It would just be moving from one functional area to the other, meaning general government, public safety, public works, um, C and D and community services. It never happens between enterprise funds. You can't do that. They're separate um, entities. It's, it never happens with retirement. So it's only within there and it's very rare that, that happens. Now, as you know, that the uh, retirement assessment and the regional lockup assessment are obligations of the town and um, they're to be paid in their entirety uh, for the year in the first month. Uh, I don't know if we get a discount on the lockup, but we do get a discount on the retirement assessment by paying in July the entire amount. We don't get an, uh, we don't get a discount on the lockup. But I also just want to point out that this one month budget is just a, a bookkeeping. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Sean? Help me out. I'm not in the same room as you. I can't do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just a bookkeeping entry because so that we can spend money in July. This whole order is gonna be rescinded and the full 12 month budget will be put in its place, including replacing retirement and everything. The whole order will be null and void and the new budget will come in place to this. Right. So what we would be doing is authorizing that amount of money to be spent on town operating budget uh, and if you notice amount to be voted and the raise and appropriate sums are $1,620,000. So the, the uh, amounts that are below where it says town operating budget and breaks it out is not an amount that to be voted is therefore 
illustration purposes, which gets back to Bob's question from before. Uh, Kathy, you had a question about the order? Uh, no, well, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm thinking that Bob is raising a point on, I don't know what sentence to put where, because we, you, we don't normally do one month budget. So clearly, you know, a one month budget in any given month, there would be things moving around because some departments would spend more in July and others would spend more in September. Um, so that's, so the, the operating budget for the manager for the year has line items for each of these. So I think Bob was just saying that, you know, do we write something somewhere that makes it clear that we understand everything that Sonia just said, that this is going to flow right into a 12 month budget for the public, for the history, or for whatever. Because the other thing is that of these line items, the regional assessment is a full 12th of a year when I did the math, and many of the others are not. So I don't want anyone in the public to think we're somehow running the town for 1.6 times 12. So I just don't know where will you put words around an order so the council understands it and the public at large. Maybe you do a paragraph leading into the order so it doesn't have to be in the order because this is so unusual um, because of what's going on. You know, um, we had that conversation yesterday and so maybe it just has the quick paragraph before, you know, that it's not that the manager will be therefore that for the entire year flexible to move money around wherever um, and that this doesn't represent a one twelfth of each of, yeah. That's. I just want to say the word I was looking for is housekeeping item. Yeah. But anyways, I I wouldn't write that into the order. It can be part okay. of the report from the um, finance committee, but I wouldn't restrict the orders any more than they already are. You want to have most flexibility to um, to cover things. Everything's transparent. Every change is reported quarterly. So. so then it just may be that finance writes this really clearly so that anyone who comes across this order understands what it is and what it isn't. Yeah. Right. That's too good. Item. That, that's the way I think that um, I would look at it too, is it really needs to be in our report clearly so that it's understandable to the uh, council and to anyone who reads the report along with the order. But I think the order legally stands on its own and has, this, has the clarity that's required. But the other thing I'd note is going back to last year, uh, about uh, in June when we passed the order for the appropriation for the entire FY20 budget, um, it was similarly structured in that all of the town operating budget was raised and appropriated in a single amount. Uh, so we're not doing anything differently for the one month budget than we did for the 12 month budget in FY20. And, Dorothy uh, Ezra. Yeah, Dorothy. Yes. Um, I'm just thinking in a, um, at this time, there are people who are going to look in the budget. So if they go and take a look at the one month budget, do they know to go look at the finance report that goes with it? I mean, it's very difficult to keep on top of things. And although this is a one month budget, we're at a time when many people are going to be looking at records and asking to see them. So to my mind, it's better to be clear. And that if that includes adding a sentence or an asterisk or a referral note to it, something, I would do that. Um, also, Andy, you raised thoughts in my mind. Um, if town meeting would vote to move things around in the operating budget, that's not the equivalent to the town manager doing it. Um, wouldn't the equivalent be that the town manager would propose it and the town council would vote on it? I'm, I'm really just in a very, um, I'd say, I wouldn't say defensive mood, but since it's a big interest in transparency, I think that we have to make sure that whatever we do can be understood by interested members of the public who want to see what we're doing. There's no, there's no plan to move between any of these line items at all. And if there was, it would be total trans totally transparent. Okay, good. 
Yeah, I think the transparency wasn't the issue, it was ease of administration that um, sort of got us to thinking about just doing the last year, the um, structure that um, we just described. The important things that are out there, we have, I, if you look at other cities and towns and even look at our, excuse me for saying this, Sean, look at the school district, um, I think we have much more on our um, on our website available about all aspects of the budget um, that if there is a point of transparency, um, I don't think that it's missing. We even have um, a piece in there where if you want to go and look at the actual transactions, um, that's available on the website. Yeah. Our website is uh, very complete for transparency, and that's sort of been the historical um, value that we've put forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is the legal document, and I think that um, the question is keeping it simple. It sort of came up actually in a non-financial uh, order. Uh, one of our um, counselors um, was objecting to putting whereas clauses into the order because the whereas clauses, she was arguing, don't belong there at all, um, that the order should just be the order. And uh, this is sort of in that same light. So are there, were there any questions about last night's dis um, discussion yet to talk about? Because if not, then what I would be looking for is a motion that the Finance Committee recommends appropriation order FY21 04A for adoption by the Town Council. So moved. Kathy moves. What Kathy you just made that motion. Yeah, I second. Okay. Who is it who seconded? Dorothy. Dorothy seconded. So is there any further discussion on the motion? And uh, I'm looking for like, doing it by raised hands since I can't see um, with the document on the screen other than the current speaker. Uh, but I see no hands up. I don't see any hands up from the uh, non-voting members. And I'm going to um, if I don't see a hand go up from the non-voting members, assume that that means that they um, agree with the motion that is on the floor. So, uh, you seem to be fine, Andy. I think we're fine because we've given opportunity for discussion. I do have to do a roll call vote, however, um, from the uh, four member voting members of the. Uh, Council who are present. Um, so, uh, Griesmer? Did you say Griesmer? Yes. Yes, approve. <laughs> That's not good. Um, Pam? Yes. Shane? Yes. And Steinberg votes yes. So it's four to zero with one member um, absent of the voting members. And uh, I think that that means we can go on to the uh, next agenda, next two agenda items, and uh, the uh, question I, I think is the next one. The uh, um, I'm getting there. The report, the CPA. We don't really need to go. We can just take up the report for the CPA. Um, Kathy helped me write that. There is one additional piece that was very important. It's the finance committee process. Okay. We're... Andy, your internet just was unstable. You just need to repeat what you said. Okay. Um, 
So then, then let's go over it. And that may have been a problem with the name because I thought I said your name uh, before. But anyway, uh, so let's go to the process now. Can you, do you have the, uh, or yes. I do if you want to let me screen share with just the. Yeah, um, I have the process. Hold on. We just want the grid up. And uh, Mary Lou is going to had sent us one additional or send me one additional item. And I don't know if she wants to talk about it. Um, but uh, the purposes of this were to help um, to both frame questions for when we have presentations and um, also to take the lead role in developing the section. So Mary Lou, you had uh, made some comments. So you want to repeat? It's up to you, but if you want to repeat them, please do. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Mary Lou. OK. I just put that together from the uh, old finance committee uh, meeting. We over time developed a series of questions that we would like answered, you know, some ideas in terms of, of uh, people, equipment, what they do. And, you know, it's a rough copy. Uh, I send it to you and Kathy. If you think it's worth passing along to everybody else, they can take from it what they wish or totally disregard it. But I think we had found it uh, helpful and it at least might be a starting point for some. Is okay. this button up on the screen, Andy? Uh, that's not it. Yeah, no. that's not it. I, why don't we leave this on the screen for a moment? Oh, sorry. Uh, just because I want to see if everybody's agreeable. One other thing, Sean, you had put in a date for, I think uh, you were suggesting a date for the presentation of the uh, planning and development, conservation inspections, which wasn't listed in the original schedule. Yeah, um, we were gonna add it to the same same afternoon as general government, which I think is J uh, July 9th. Um, out of all the finance committee presentation dates, that looked like the one that had the most ability to be added to. Um, so it wasn't, we just missed it when we originally did the calendar. So we, we added, um, conservation development to July 9th. And you were going to uh, confirm with the uh, various department heads their availability. For the yeah, I let Dave, I let Dave, Dave actually raised it. Dave Zomack actually raised, when am I supposed to go? So I, um, so he's, he's aware of that date and we've let the other department heads know of their dates. So um, Looking at the reason I wanted to leave this up for a second is that I took all the replies from um, people who gave replies and then filled in for the rest. Um, is there any uh, discomfort or um, request for changes to what I put forward? So I don't see any. Um, Dorothy has her hand up. Dorothy? literally her hand yes i did both okay um i would wonder if i could i was very interested in the items that i mentioned from the community services program which are i now find out are under public safety um i'm just wondering if i could um do some of those with community services as well well, of course, uh, when we do the when we do all of the budgets, all of the committees should be asking questions. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for the questions to be coming exclusively from okay. any one individual. So that uh, if you have questions about public safety or anything else, if you have taken on community services, that's fine. What we want to make sure is that somebody is reading the budget book and making sure that at least one person is well prepared for the okay. meeting, but hopefully we're all well prepared for the meeting. I think it's just uh, our experience with the complexity of the budget and the length of the budget. Mm -hmm. that, um, you can get lost in it if you uh, don't focus on 
the specific areas. But if you have the time to get through the entire budget, you certainly should get through uh, in detail anything that you're interested in. So you're not okay. precluded from asking questions. Very good. Uh, Mary, Mary Lou and then Kathy, I see two more hands up. No, I'm fine. You're fine? Okay. I guess I didn't uh, have my yeah. hand up. Okay, I, I was just going to um, say to, to Bob um, that on public works and enterprise funds that they're going to be on the same day. So I was planning whatever to learn as much about both of them as I could by going backwards. So just that you would know that I'm also doing that. Um, and then on public safety, Pat's not here, but I actually, I went on our website, um, Andy, when you say transparency, I could get all the way back to, I think FY06. I forget where I could no longer find budgets, but there was a FY10. And I was gonna ask Sean where to find some, because I was trying to track staffing in town and where it's gone up and down and look at police, look at fire. And our website actually has a lot of that information. Just sometimes you can't find it right away. So I was going to be an understudy for public safety, like doing some work and then cross-referencing um, enterprise funds and public works, because it strikes me that the staffing for the larger public works is servicing both the enterprise funds and roads and others. So just trying to understand that mix. So it was just a comment. So it went with Dorothy. It's not that I'm, I wasn't going to be exclusive about that, but I found last year it was the first time through those, both of those. And I felt like I needed to know more by going backwards as well as looking at this year's, the coming very thick budget document. So. Uh, um. No, I think that that's a fair thing to do. I mean, that's an added piece of, I think we should just be flexible in how we deal with this. So that if uh, you're spending a lot of time on public safety, for example, since that's you, when you gave, you just let Pat know that you've been spending a lot of time on it. So she's aware of it and she probably welcome having the opportunity to consult with one other member of the committee because you're not tripping into a majority until you get the three. Yeah, and I, I just think if we come up with questions when we get the budget book, I found it useful, I don't know whether the departments have, to try to think of, if I have specific questions, to write them down in advance. So before they come to the meeting, instead of they, they're having to look through things. So I don't know whether I'll have them, but I didn't do that as well with the budget process last year, my first time through, um, I was thinking of questions as I was looking at the book rather than in advance. So I just, yeah. Cause we're gonna be sque squeezing a lot into a very short period of time. Yeah, we would welcome the questions in advance. We can give, get them out to department heads so that they can um, try to address them in there when they come to meet with you. And we would just send them to you, Sean, I'm assuming. You, yeah, you, you can send them to me, involved. Paul, Sonia, or all of us. We'll, we'll make sure they get to where they need to go. Okay. And the staffing history question. Uh, yeah, I can help. I, I think the question was, where is it on the web or previous budgets on the web so you can see the where the staffing has been in the past. And I can, I can send some of that to you, Kathy. Okay. You know, I'll just send you. You'll see how far back I got before I my word search didn't turn anything up. You know, I could go back really pretty far and then, oh, you know, I wanted to get back because Lynn, that, I, Lynn, I found it very helpful to see what had happened in the last recessions. You know, where, oh, yeah. where had we tightened up and how did we adjust and then, and then what happened? You know, I mean, it was just an, and I only was following one department, but um, in any case, my son from Switzerland was amazed at what you have put up on the website. He said, look at this. This is great. <laughs> so. can, I, can I just mention something? If you look at the um, October indicators reports historically, there is FTEs in there. So you can see the ups and downs. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to point that out, but 
the two other places to look at one is the uh, financial trend indicators, as uh, Sonny just indicated. The other, if you really want to get into the history of things, um, you can find all sorts of stuff in the annual reports. Uh, but they take a lot of time, especially when you get to the point where they're no longer available uh, online, but they're only available as PDF scan documents. And they're really, uh, and they're really wordy, Andy. So, you know, I'm, <laughs> but yes, I found some. Whoa. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mary Lou has Lou, do you still have a question? Yes, I see your hand stop. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm wondering, you know, we're looking at the budget, and those are projected amounts that we think we will spend. But at the end of the year, those numbers change. So are we all going to be looking at the budget with projected numbers, or should we be looking at the end of the year report with actual numbers? Otherwise, we're going to have different people looking at different things. I mean, I, I've, I've done the schools, you know, for a long time, and I know that those numbers are projected, and then they show me what they actually spent last year. Uh, and you can see there's a difference. It may not be much, but in some cases it could be a little more. So I guess my question is, what sets of numbers do we look at so we're all consistent? Thank you. Yeah. This my, I mean, we can all talk about our own experience to the extent that we've done this before. Uh, the, the budget we're approving is the budget that's proposed. And obviously one of the things that gets reported in the budget is where there are changes from the previous year and why there are changes from the previous year. So we understand that, um, but that still is not always on the actuals. Because of the timing, it is often built upon the prior year, is the prior year projected. And uh, the only other place that I know to look for is to the extent you can to look at the uh, quarterly reports. Okay. So, but it is worth looking at. Yes. Dorothy? Andy, can I your, uh, All right, so I have an awful lot of finance documents and I'm looking for the one that says when we talk about what. And I had written it in my date book, but I never wrote community in anywhere. So I've just gone through the file that are sitting on top of my desk. I don't know what document to look for to find that schedule. Do you know what I'm talking about? Andy, can I respond to Dorothy and then the previous question? Um, so the calendar, the updated calendar is on the website, um, on the budget page. Okay. So that you can find the most recent calendar. And I believe I did put the one up that has community or uh, conservation and planning in there now. Um, so that will give you the most up-to-date schedule and we'll update it if anything else changes. Um, the other question was about, uh, from Mary Lou, about actuals. If, if you look at our budget book from prior years, you do, we, there are actuals included in there by different categories within departments. So there right. is some information on actual spending um, that council members and, and committee members can dig into and ask questions if they see a large change between actual spending and the budget. Um, so that data is provided. Okay, thank you. Calendar. So, I don't know if anyone has any questions about the calendar. If you go down further, you'll see the, what we're talking about. And I guess to make sure that um, if you've now listed as being the uh, person who's going to take the lead role in analyzing budget proposals, to make sure that you're going to be available for the date that we're talking about. Of course, these are all virtual meetings. Uh, but that's the month where we have where we're getting into frequent meetings for a short period of time because by statute we only have 30 days to uh, okay. Okay. 
review the budget. Sean, you said we were going to do conservation and what? On yeah, the planning and inspections, it's all together. Yeah, you can put C and D. They, they call it C and D as an acronym. Um, and yeah, that, that day seemed like the best day to fold it in, looking at the other days, and that those will be pretty packed. Okay. So uh, I think that we're set then, and you know, this is not an item we need to vote on, so we can just, uh, this is just for discussion purposes. Um, Mary Lou's provided us with um, some guidance that we're gonna look at later. Uh, I don't think we have to do that today. Uh, because we we're not going to be looking at the budget until July, because we're not going to get it until the, uh, later in to, till the end of June. The 29th. So that's pretty much the end. So the only other thing that we really have, because uh, we have no attendees, so we've nobody, there's no reason to think about public comment, is. Um, with Kathy's assistance, uh, I did uh, a first round, a second, she did a second round, and then I did a third round of the uh, section that would be in the next uh, Finance Committee report regarding the Community Preservation Act. And uh, the only thing that is going to be added is we're going to add the actual order in there because the order lists all of the projects by dollar amount and by category. And uh, that that was an important part to illustrate uh, in a more visual fashion uh, what is in the written draft. So I don't know, Kathy, if you had anything else to say, because that was one thing you wanted to make sure got added within some no, fashion. No, I thought, I, thought, I thought it looked good, Andy, the draft. And I just, I just personally always like if it, if I'm, looking at a total and it adds up, I like look, being able to see the table. So that's why I thought just, we, we had that nice table when we were discussing it that Nate had up. So just inserting that. Okay. So, so if Sean or Sonia can uh, either send it to me in um, whatever um, format word or whatever it's in for the order, I can make it a part of the document um, and it becomes a single document, or you can add it for us in a reverse fashion, but we'll make that part of it. Were there any comments about it, or are people comfortable with what we said? So seeing uh, Dorothy, you had something. I didn't see this to print it out, so I, I have to read it yet, but I'll do that. Uh, I, I guess it's in today's mail or yesterday's mail. Yes, it was in today's email. I'm sorry I didn't get it to you earlier, okay. but yeah, I, 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 I literally I, was consumed by preparation for yesterday to try and see if yeah. I could get us through. Let's leave it this way. If you have anything that you think of later, Mm -hmm. uh, okay. you know, get it to me promptly. I will do uh, that. Because we don't usually vote on the report, but I did mm -hmm. want to make sure that I got the sense of the committee correctly. And if anybody is uncomfortable in the end with uh, how it's phrased um, or what's included, right. uh, let us know. It does focus on the order because that's what it's about. It does make reference to the additional item, but uh, the council's not going to be voting on that next week. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to focus on what we're going to be voting on next okay. week. Excellent. So, Andy, I just have, I don't have a question on this, but um, we just did the one month budget. Are you going to do a finance report that has two parts? One is the one yeah, month. I will. I will add the finance committee, okay. uh, and I'll do that with you uh, just to report on the one month budget. Because both of these come up on Monday night, correct? The come. Correct. Next. It'll be all be in a single report. Okay. And. Uh, for, so. Yeah, yeah. And and then I just with Paul's capital 
Um, that's, I'm right. I've got my dates right. That's on Monday night, correct? Yeah. The that is right. And so, um, what, last year, I, I think he had one page that was CPA, but I'm not sure whether he's planning on doing that. Uh, anyway, I, that's it for him to do, so I won't worry about it. But, right. but that's also on Monday night, correct? correct. I mean, so CPA Monday Monday night, we have a 5.30 meeting, which is basically information. And then we have a six o'clock public forum uh, with, where we will not really repeat the information. We might do a five minute summary. And then we forum, which is what requires the 50% opportunity for the public to speak. And then we'll go on by 6.30 to our meeting, unless the public forum takes longer. Because um, I'm just remembering for those who sat through last year's Capital Forum, the entire conversation was about one CPA project. I mean, I shouldn't say the entire, but most of the evening and people talk. So I, we're, not, we're not at risk this year. I mean, this is a simple list of what's on the CPA list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, the one thing that we might Care about as proponents of the one citizen petition. Yeah, I think they that it's um, it's not gone. It could be lined up for the reserve fund. So that's the other thing that Paul, you know, it's the reserve fund has a value. This new thing we put together, um, particularly, I saw the schools talked about solar, solar studies, solar canopies. So it's not. It's not gone, it's just not a line item anywhere. Yeah, so I can imagine we might hear about it. Yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. I don't think that we have anything else that we have to do. There are no attendees, so we're not gonna ask about public comment. I have nothing else to add to the agenda, um, unless anybody else has it. It's something that they would like to request be added. But otherwise, I think that, uh, we're complete, and uh, if I see nobody who wants to ask anything else, we can treat ourselves as adjourned. Thank you. And Thank I'll, you. Uh, Thank you. The meeting then is adjourned at three fifty p.m. Thank you. Bye, Thanks. everyone. Bye. Bye.